Well, it's great to see you again, Trevor. How are you doing today? Wonderful to see you. Unfortunately, not in person yet, but uh, but uh, yeah, I'm doing better. I'm doing better than I have been over the past few few months. I think um, the sun is shining again. How are you? How have you been? I'm good. I feel the same way. It's sort of nice to be moving into the summer and to get to see people a little bit more. Right. Uh, but, you know, we're still playing a lot of games at home. I'll say it, it has been one of the biggest things that has kept me sane during this time is that, like, I have, like, a group of friends from Trinidad. Yeah. And they all play. So we're all online. So, like, one of them is in Brazil. Another one is in, I want to say, he's in Norway right now. And, I mean, most of the time the game is just a backdrop to you guys having a conversation. So, you know, like, everyone just hanging out together. The global stuff you're talking about, like, playing with all your friends around the world is super cool. Like... I always think about this, I, you know, the, the reality that gaming is this media forum where you can connect with someone you may have never met, you might not speak the same language as them, you might not have the same abilities as them, and you can right. come together and achieve something. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's because it, a really great story is one where you're immersed in the journey of another, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you can transform yourself into anything. You can, you can become, uh, uh, you know, another race, another gender, another age, another species. Um, someone from another time. That's something I've always loved about games is how it can it can create like an almost singular humanity. Where it's like, no, you truly are experiencing this through somebody else's eyes. And so I've always loved that. A big part of my role is looking at all the games that come to Xbox about how important it is to see diversity in the characters in games so people can have all of those different experiences that you're talking about. What happens is actually every time we do a big showcase, we look at all of these different assets for the show and all of these different games. And at the end of it, I turned to my daughter and I'm like, okay, so what game did you love the most? She said, the gunk. And I was like, really? And it, by the way, it was like trending on Twitter and everybody was talking about this, this game. And I said, why did you love it? And she said, oh, the character looked like me. And I was just blown away. Because we had diversity of voices in the room, we actually got the right diversity of games in the show. So as long as you have people with all those different perspectives yeah. in the room and making the decisions, you get beautiful outcomes. And we get the beauty of having that game on Xbox and part of our showcase. And my daughter got to see someone who looked like herself. I, I, I love those moments. You know, I, I think, I mean, that's where like, you know, it seems so obvious now, but people forget there was a time when in most games you couldn't customize a character. And then I remember the first time a game was like, oh, we've got afros, we've got cornrows, we've got braids, we've got dreadlocks, we've got... So good. And that makes it so feel good. like for everyone that like the game includes you in some way. I mean, then you start experimenting with other things. Then I was like, huh, I wonder what I'd look like with blonde hair. And so I remember when games first started having like diversity, people would play with the character that looked like them. Mm -hmm. Well, I take that character because I look like that and I'll take that character because I look like that. And then at some point people went, no, I like that character more. I like playing with her. I feel like she's faster and she's stronger, even if she isn't, but I just feel like she is. Mm -hmm. And now you have little boys going like, yeah, this woman kicks ass the most. And that's a great thing to have is them not even thinking about it in that way, but yeah. having these people that we've for so long forgotten as characters, just, I guess, existing in a world where it's like, yeah, man, you can be anything is essentially what gaming should be about. We had a lot of conversations about this, too, because um, what my team does is we do, um, we focus on game creators, just like the content right. that they yeah. bring, the tools that they use. And when I started thinking more and more about diversity in games, I realized like the root of that actually where it starts is who makes the game, right? That, you know, if you, if you make sure that you're empowering the broadest group of people to actually participate in the actual creation, then of course you're naturally going to get those diverse stories, perspectives, mm -hmm. archetypes, characters. They're going to be told. You know, someone making a game at their kitchen table or a group doing something out of their garage. And I love that part. I love that. Yeah, I think that's that's the most exciting thing is just seeing what people can create with the resources that they have. And I think some of the most impressive and exciting experiences I've had playing games are actually games that have been created using the simplest yeah. tools and in the simplest ways. Because a lot of the time people think that a game is all about, you know, the the explosion of it all. That you know, what what are the pyrotechnics? What are the, what is the flair? And don't get me wrong, that makes a huge difference. But I think game creators should never forget that story is everything. Immersion yes. is everything.
It's so good to see you again. Uh, I'm glad to hear you're doing better. I hope next time I see you, I see you in person. Yeah, I'm excited to come out, to hang out with everybody at Xbox, you know, to hang out yeah. with everybody on, on campus and just like play games, talk games, enjoy games, and then celebrate, I guess, being in person again. Um, and then looking at how we create the next generation of games that keeps us connected, you know, the, the way that games did during this whole pandemic. So yeah, great seeing you again, yeah. Sarah. Thank you.